So basically, I was going to film the whole video with the lens cap off. Oh, no, it wasn't. Wow, did that do something crazy to the camera? It should adjust in a minute. Hello, random fact for you. I normally uh, keep my <laughs> lens cap in my pocket uh, when I make videos, and sometimes I go out walking the dogs and I find it at like 10 at night. I'm going, that's not a poo bag. Today is the fourth video in our roast dinner playlist. We've done the roast beef, we've done the roast chicken, and we've done the roast pork. Today is actually my personal favorite. I say personal because I put this poll on my Twitter, and uh, chicken is the winner winner chicken dinner right there. Probably actually, because you can get so much out of it, and it is the, it is the cheapest. You can just do so much with it. Uh, but lamb is my personal favorite. The combination of lamb and mint sauce, Mwah! So today we're doing a roast lamb leg uh, with a gravy with a bit of wine in it, a bit naughty, uh, homemade mint sauce, some minty peas as a bonus, and a really simple puree to uh, shove alongside it. I think you're gonna love it. Well, I hope you're gonna love it. Uh, this is a leg of lamb. Uh, it's got a bone still in it. I like to cook lamb with the bone still in. You actually get a leg of lamb on a shoulder without the bones and stuff like that in it, so it's already prepared. You can get a joint, which is very similar to the porks, where you just slice it and it's just nice and round and easy. So many different ways, but whatever you do, room temperature for about 20 minutes. Oops. We're gonna go for our trusty old roasting tin with nice deep uh, walls so that we can catch the juices for a gravy. All right, so here is the lamb leg. I've just given it a wash and they're giving it a pet. EastEnders pun. Randomly, one of my friends was in EastEnders over Christmas. They killed him off. His name was Ray, the Irish guy. Any British people watch it? I know him. I had, I had dinner with him the other day. Cool, huh? They <laughs> lost track there. Uh, so yeah, this is 1.8 kilos. And just like the beef, the chicken and the pork, we have a table right here that I'm following because of course you don't have to do lamb well done. It's completely up to you. Just use that chart to your liking and you'll, you'll, you'll be fine. So T-Rex arm style, you season it any way you want. You can rub herbs and all different kinds of flavorings in it if you're smoking it, barbecuing it as well. Oh my goodness. But I was gonna go uh, salt and pepper, but I'm just thinking, I think I'll show you like maybe putting some herbs in it. You can do garlic and stuff as well. Yeah, let's do that. So that's just some vegetable oil. And I'm gonna get a brush, some flake salt, da -da 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 -da. some pepper. Deep down in the jungle, you find some rosemary. With a sharp knife, I'm just making some incisions. And I'm just gonna stick the rosemary into it. Just like that. There we go, it doesn't have to be anything too crazy. And of course, I'm just gonna stick a little bit of rosemary in the pan, boom, like that, because it will just flavor it. This will really flavor the meat, and that is ready. Oven. I don't know a railway station's height. What? I don't want to know the height of a railway station. Uh, oven to 200 C fan. Again, just like the beef, chicken, and pork, the oven is going hotter, first of all, to help sear that meat, and then we'll lower it down. Now, some of you guys have been messaging me going, hey, I like to actually sear my meat in the pan, first of all, then put it in the oven. Of course, of course you can do that. I, I, I'm not you. Just one other thing whilst the oven finishes to warm. That rosemary, as I say, is gonna really infuse the gravy, so we'll add some onion. The onion's actually gonna come from this pack. A lot of supermarkets sell these like budget bundles. This was like a pound. So we're gonna use the rest of it to make a really cool puree thing at the end. But the onion, we'll shove in there for the gravy. I really feel like in the last few weeks we've turned up the uh, food puns. Take a good look at this because it won't look like this in a little while. Well, if it does, I've done something wrong. We'll go middle shelf. And that's gonna seal it, as I said. I seal it in my fingers. So the cool thing about this lamb, it does take quite a while. So the rest of the stuff we're doing is very basic. So you can just kind of sit in the sun like you. All right, let's get you lowered. Drop it down by 40 degrees. Oh, 90 minutes I'm giving it. Okay, so this recipe is on a budget. It's very appealing and we're gonna get to the root of the problem with our veg. So peel a carrot, like that, and then just chop it rough, because we're gonna boil it, it's gonna go all soft and boom. But all in all, this vegetable all together uh, is one kilo of vegetables. So you wanna aim for that, a mix of anything, but just carrots and parsnips will work normally well, but I was like, oh my gosh, it's a turnip. And turnips make me feel like back to my roots. <laughs> I'm from the West Country, like, I like my turnip round here in the West Country near Bristol. Turnip, my lover. Gert Lush. 
You just want to make it so they're roughly even sizes. So this big bit at the end, obviously we'll get rid of that. But that bit there, like we're going to want to have that. And the turnip, I don't even know what to do with this. So I'm just going to... Now seriously, again with the turnip, look, you just peel it and you don't get any on the floor. Like that. There we go, lots of vegetables there. Um, one thing I'm not really doing is focusing on just generic how to cook your side vegetables, you know, like runner beans and stuff like that, because if you look on the packaging, it just tells you that, and generally, you just shove it in. This is some almost boiling water that's been slightly salted, just a little pinch. Ah, woo! Veg is going in, and we're gonna boil this on a low simmer, so I'm gonna turn the heat down a little bit, add that on high. Just gonna soften it, so it's gonna take about 20 to 25 minutes. It's all gonna get blended up, then we're gonna ram it with flavor. As my nan used to say, butter makes anything taste good. That's our theory. Just had a little bit of a thought. We had a brainwave. So like, when we make the gravy, uh, obviously we add a stock in there, but we're making a sort of stock anyway, a natural stock, but we'll still stick a stock cube in. Did I say stock too much? Let's take stock of this. What I mean is we'll still take the stock cube uh, with the water, but the water will come from our veg where we're making a natural stock. This is amazing. I'm getting way too excited about a roast, but the lamb is smelling, oh. In this pan is sugar, white wine vinegar, water, and some fresh mint leaves. That is all you need to make your own homemade mint sauce. So I've taken those things out of the pan for now, but it's being cooked in here. But this is fresh mint. It smells so good. Actually, as a side note, if you have never grown fresh mint, even if you're the worst gardener in the world, it will just grow like crazy. It will take over your life. So all I'm gonna do is just pick the mint leaves off of the stalk, discard those. We just want the good stuff. So that is a nice amount of mint. In fact, I'm gonna take a little pinch of that. There's that word again. Ouch! From the peas, all right? So mint sauce is a lot like a relationship. It's what you put into it. You can tweak it. Oh, please, oh, please, I, I, I can make it work. I can be better. Um, the mint's going in there, all right? We're gonna get one, two, three tablespoons of water. All right, so one, two tablespoons of caster sugar. And for now, one tablespoon of white wine vinegar. The cool thing with this, of course, is that we can sit it on here, so it's just a medium, past or done, past, all right, mate? We can sit it on here, mix it together, and it, we leave it to, to infuse. So, because it, it's such a small amount of water, it will come to a boil rather quickly indeed. And we just want to sort of let the mint wilt for like a couple of minutes, and that is it. So it's all about just warming it up. I'll show you in a second. I was thinking to myself, the only thing I don't like about mint sauce is when you have it, and then you get it all in your teeth, and you're like, hi. <laughs> you know, like, I'm the sort of person, if I see someone with something in their teeth, I will tell them. I don't know, is that a thing? You need, I, I need to. It's like, ah, ah. Just leave this for a couple of minutes to wilt that all down, let them flavours mingle, and that is it. So here we go. We're just spooning it out there, and there's a teeny bit of fluid still in there, but that's fine, because we want it to sit and kind of, almost like tea. Treat it like tea leaves. You want it to infuse that fluid in there. Sit it for about at least half an hour. And obviously, if you're making more, obviously, you know, this isn't a massive amount, but just scale up the sugar and the vinegar. Oh, that is beautiful. Oh, things are so much better homemade, aren't they? Convenience versus taste, maybe? Just to be completely honest, I just doubled that amount because later when I take the thumbnail picture, I'm gonna be doing it and posing with all the food and everyone will be like, where's the lamb sauce? Like that Gordon Ramsay gif, you know? So our veg is done and I need the colander, but I generally, for the life of me, don't know where it is. Um, Mrs. Barry made a devastatingly nice soup last night. I don't know if you guys ever remember pot noodles. They did a pot mash, a curry version. She basically made that as a soup. It was insane. Um, it's one of those things you need to make and you'll be like, I'll try and do it again and it never tastes the same. Can't find the colander, so we'll just drain it out. Just check that your uh, vegetables are softened, okay? Just stick a fork in there. Stick a fork in me, I'm done. But you can see the colour of that water. It's not water, it's a funky stock which we'll use for the gravy. We'll leave a teeny bit of moisture in there, okay? Getting a carrot out of a bowl of really, really hot water. There's a strawberry huller for that. <laughs> All right, uh, down on there, nice sturdy surface. Uh, so any salt flakes or just salt, just normal salt. Uh, we'll um, 
we'll get that in. Pepper and a big old chunk of butter. Now the heat will melt that through. Lovely jubbly, naughty. Possibly a teeny bit too much, but I'm, I'm channeling my inner nan. She loved a bit of butter. Yeah, my nan passed away, but she was an absolute legend. So we're gonna squish this down. You could use a food processor if you want, as I say. If it's too dry, you can add some uh, more water, some more cream, some milk if you want. But I wanna kind of make it chunky and it's almost like a, a chunky puree. I'll chuck some spices in as well if you want. But yeah, we'll stick it over here. Not sure if I'll warm it up or not towards the end. I, I prefer it cold if I'm honest, but it doesn't matter. Right, let's get rid of you. Oh. 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 <laughs> Just want to keep looking at it. Even these onions, like they are they are nice. You could you could serve those. Really nice and charred. Which is a place in Somerset. Got my uh, carving fork and we're gonna stick it uh, into the meat. Oh and use it to help. Ha! Be, be careful. Look at that colour and the flake, the rosemary. Rosemary! Oh, what's happened to you? I need help. I need a work colleague. I go a bit insane when I get excited about food. Look at it though. Huh? This is Barry said, uh, make sure you get some foil from the supermarket because we're running low. Forgot the foil, didn't I? But I think we're going to have enough. <laughs> she wasn't wrong. That'll do. Just rested loosely on top. Leave it for 25 to 30 minutes. Gravy and peas. But are they peas? Well, they're not peas. I actually prefer dropping an ice pack out of my freezer. I actually prefer petit pois. Now I'm not a uh, je ne sais pas, uh, je vais j'ai une vache dans mes pantalons s'il vous plaît. Le petit pois actually means little peas. They're basically peas that aren't fully matured, so they're younger and they're sweeter, just like me. All right, you recognize this pan? We just cleaned it out. It's still probably got a minty smell. Now, if you want to do a really fun game as well uh, and to annoy your wife, you can just kind of do a little, little booby trap like Home Alone with the peas with the opening. Just kind of leave it like that, just by the edge of the door. So when they open up, it's really good. Keeps the marriage strong. Hey! So let's grab our mint from earlier, the bit that we reserved, just a teeny bit. All right, we don't need much. We're gonna be naughty, because we're gonna use the stock from the vegetables that we cooked, enough just to cover it. And then a little dollop of butter. Now we get it on a hob. We're just simmering it, just to cook it through. All right, I don't know red wine other than the song. Uh, red, red wine, it just all tastes the same to me. It tastes like Christmas, not a massive fan. But this one uh, has blackcurrant flavours, subtle oak and fine tannins deliver a superbly balanced palate. Ugh. This is already warming up. Look at that, because it's still hot from all of that roasting. I learned this on the channel. Can't remember the video now, but flour, you actually have to cook it. I never knew that. So we've got the rosemary sprig in there still as well. The flavour all in that pan. Goodness me, so just bring it up to a thick paste with the flour. Scrape up any bits here. I feel like this is a first person shooter video game angle. <laughs> we'll now add in our stock. I'm gonna go for about 150 mil of that. You can make this as thick as you want, folks. You know, chuck some Bisto gravy in it as well if you want, or even more flour to thicken it. Oh gosh, what am I doing? You'll notice I've taken the onions out because I liked them so much, I'm actually gonna serve them alongside it all. So we're just crumbling in a stock cube. There we go. All right, this is good. Bit of wine. Oh, look at that, I love that. Purple stain, purple stain. Of course, one other thing to show you amongst the gravy sauna is as the pan gets this hot, look. Look at how much we're cleaning it. We're getting rid of all of that gubbins and all that flavor from roasting the lamb and it's in here, the flavor. All right, here we go through a sieve. Oh, lovely. Oh, can you see that rosemary going, please, please let me stay with my friends. With any of the gravies we've made, as it sort of settles like this, you might find a thin layer of fat. Just get, there's actually a gadget for that, which I don't have. Actually, I do have it upstairs. I'll show you it another time. But for those of you that don't have the gadget, you can just grab a teaspoon and it will just sit on the top layer. You can just lift it off and that'll be that. So here we go, our root veg medley. The mint sauce, the mint peas, you can add some more butter on it if you wish, it's good enough. 
the onion that was roasted in with the lamb. I just think that's too good to leave as it is. We've got the lamb gravy and of course our lamb. So that's rested nicely. Randomly, whilst you rest meat, it does go up by five to 10 degrees. That goes for all the ones we've done. I didn't actually say that before. And again, some of these juices that are coming out, you can add it to the gravy if you wish, but let's try it. All right, so uh, let's carve up this lamb. Uh, I'm no expert at this, but what I've done in the past is just started to slice straight through. This is a very, very awkward angle for me. Um, so yours will look a lot better than mine. Just keep going through as much as you can until you hit the bone. All right. So it kind of gives you a flat edge to rest it on. And I like to sort of cut down right into it. See these big slices like that? And then that sort of allows you, well, hey, to grab it by the bone and then slice down along it and your slices will just come off like that. It's sort of same with any of these other bits. You just kind of work your way around the bone and take off all these little strips of meat. You get all the good, see all that stuff there that's hiding away? Get to that. So you're left with even these little bits here. Chuck it in a stir fry and your leftovers. You really want it all off. This is the most expensive joint, so do make the most of it. I'll get all the meat off that in a bit. It will just fall off. But basically what I do, I cut until I hit the bone on the side, which gives me a flat edge. Turn it over, down, 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 across, and then just cut away any. And you get a real nice mixture and combination of different sizes. So you get some real nice little off cuts like that, real super moist meat. But then you get some really decent slices too. It's just gonna be going down the same way, isn't it? So make it, yeah, it doesn't matter if you make a mistake. So here we go then, folks. A nice big old medley of lamb. Some of those slices got the outer edge on it. Real flavor there. Mint sauce, bearing in mind we've got a little bit of mint on the peas. It's quite subtle there, but just goes really well on the lamb. You don't need too much, just a nice punch, but my dad literally used to put it on everything. And then down straight from Daisy. <laughs> it's cooled down a little bit, I need to warm it up, but uh, there it is. it's coming out of her back. Oh my gosh. Okay, yes, it is a creamer. Gravy. Don't forget you can mix up all the sides that I've used so far on this and we're doing some other funky ones on the veggie ones. So just play around with it. Oh, that gravy is insane. That wine, mmm. The veg. Oh, chunky, rustic and buttery and really cheap as well. How cool was that? The onion. Oh, a caramelized bundle of joy. And let's grab a little piece of lamb. Lamb is the most expensive meat as far as I remember. It's, it's definitely not as cheap as chicken. Cheap as chips. Oh. So delicate and soft and moist and the tang of that mint. Oh, we've nailed this. I don't, yeah, I don't think I've got any mint in there. But I am so proud of you guys for giving these a go wherever you are in the world. It is the most awesome thing to see. Um, please. I think I did have some mint then. <laughs> Please keep the pictures coming on social media. I'll retweet as many as I can. I absolutely love uh, it. Showing you just a little bit of inspiring you to, to get just, I don't know what I'm saying. Awesome, huh? Give it a go. Check out the rest of the players. Have a barrel and subscribe if you're not already. And I'll see you next time. Check your level player. No matter what your style, the kitchen's for me. Simon's mustache, goatee, maybe all three. A couple of you asked me this. What are these? Uh, you keep seeing them in the videos from time to time. These are apparently life bricks. The kids are making them at school. It's like you just stuff plastic in there uh, and they, they're building things out of it. I don't know, it's pretty cool. Good for the environment. Cha-ching.